Greenfield and Beth Bears. Y'all give it up. Our next guest is an author, a lifestyle guru, a mama of three, and these days a fellow Texan. Her new children's book is a New York Times bestseller. It's called Just Try One Bite. That is my life with my son. Everybody, please welcome Camilla Alves McConaughey. to see you in person so this time. In person this time. Yeah, last time it was, uh, we were in your kitchen, I think. In my kitchen, yes. which is not a bad place, by the way. It is, it looked like an awesome place. I love food. Do you know, Beth, do you, do you know Matt? No, but I love your sleeves. I know, what kind we of We got the memo. Right? I know, she came out looking fancy. Yeah. Um, congrats on having a bestseller. That's Thank incredible. You. Thank yes. You so much. And also, I mean, one, why did you want to write the book? But also, what a great title. You guys are great at titles and messaging for parents and children. <laughs> because it is so hard to get my son specifically, he's very much a texture person, to eat anything. So, like, how'd you come up with the idea and, like, why'd you want to do it? Yes, I think the main goal of the book was really to create a conversation in the household where it was not preachy, but the conversation about how food can actually be better for you. Yeah. And like having kids understand, okay, how does food work in my body? Mm -hmm. Like what's good, what's not? Yeah. And we want it to be really silly. Me and Adam want it to be really silly. So the book is really silly. Kids laugh out loud. And it really creates the conversation. I'm having so many parents write me and telling me, listen, not only now, because it's reverse roast, right? I don't know if you saw that, but it's the yeah. kids getting after their parents. <laughs> for That's eating cute. crappy stuff, right? I know so that. they're going after their parents. So now the parents are writing me going, hey, this book is great because <laughs> we have so much fun. But now they're coming after me <laughs> going every, you know, they're trying new vegetables and going, why are you not eating? Right, because we all know that a lot of times we do cook the broccoli and we don't eat the broccoli ourselves. <laughs> I right? have no idea what you're referring to. <laughs> I eat so many vegetables. <laughs> I mean, we're all parents here. Do you have picky eaters? I once offered my daughter a thousand dollars to eat a piece of broccoli. A thousand? <laughs> You're rich. Well, I knew that money was staying right in my pocket. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's incredible. So wait, you've partnered with our friends at HEB for a reading campaign. So can you tell us why you I partnered did, with it? Yes. Hey, it's three reasons why. First reason is they have a program, it's called Read 3, which they've been doing since 2011. Um, and basically they encourage uh, parents and caregivers to read for kids at least three times a week. Um, then second reason is, guys, I'm terrified of reading out loud. Oh, you are? Oh, terrified. Like, it, it, is like, it is like a spotlight that I was born for. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like uh, on top of singing, I love reading aloud. Okay, maybe we need to hang out a little more. I was the nerd in the class me? that was like, pick me. Oh my gosh, I love. am. You have no idea how many times I actually like dodge the bullet to read for my kid's class and I'll send Matthew instead of me. I'm like, I can't do I'm it. I'm about to do it. My daughter's oh my gonna be so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. So every time I'm just gonna call you, okay? Yeah. So the idea of reading, read out loud in front of over 100,000 kids, to me, I was like, wow, okay. You know, we did, uh, you know, we had it in person over 2,000 kids, and then we had over 400 schools throughout Texas reading at the same time with us, and then we had thousands of kids joining uh, on YouTube, on YouTube online, I, like live, yeah. as I'm reading on the stage. But really what got me was, I was like, you know what? I don't have to be perfect. The fact that I'm on a stage looking like I look, reading out loud with an accent, making little mistakes, you know. Um, yeah. I, like, Texas is such a melting pot mm -hmm. that I was like, you know what, these kids might watch me doing this and go, you know what, if she can do it like she's doing it, I can do it too. Yeah. And also I thought that maybe they'll go back home and you know, a lot of these kids, their parents have accents, their grandparents have accents, right? Yeah. And trying to figure this out too. So they might go back home and have a little bit more of appreciation for that as well, you know? I think you also, you encourage kids and you give them confidence because one of my kids is dyslexic and we've been, I've been reading to them since they were a baby, but they just don't see it. They don't see it like that, right? So it's really hard. So yeah. 
anytime I struggle, I don't get angry at myself in front of her. I let her, I allow her to see. Anytime, you know, if you mess up a word or you whatever, you're tired and you read it wrong, it's okay for them to see that because I think that if you do that in front of kids, it enables them to be like, I don't have to be perfect when I'm exactly. reading. We all make mistakes. So I think that's 100%, important. 100%. Yeah. And then the third reason is the mayor of Austin declare that September 30th, it's official reading day in, in Texas. Oh, I love that. Yes. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So it's really cool because, you know, this thing that we started, now generations after generations, we have this one day that many activations will happen throughout the mm. state and now throughout the country, as we did, to really remember people of the importance of reading. Well, Camilla invited us down to witness this awesome HEB event, so check it out. Today we're here in Austin, Texas, and we're doing the biggest read-along event in the whole state of Texas. We have, we're gonna be reading for over 100,000 kids. Reading is so important for a child's development. It opens up their minds to possibilities that they might have never thought about or experienced before. Guys, I wanna say that I am so happy to be with you here this morning. Who loves to read here? So should we just get the reading started? Yeah. Let's do it, let's do it. Hi mama, hi papa. It's time we had a chat about oatmeal and carrots and pasta and cake. You know, I didn't grow up having a lot of reading around me. And when my kids came along, I made an effort to, you know, start reading for them when they were babies. And I see how much they have developed by just that practice. Your body needs vegetables, green ones and red ones. You gotta eat lots of them to be well-fed ones. Today was the greatest day because I thought I was gonna be super shy and I didn't want to read it. But after practicing, it was like a lot better. So how about this? I'll make you a deal. Can you just try one bite and see how you feel? I felt like this is the best experience I ever had in my life. I thought I've never been on stage before, so this is kind of like my dream came true right now. Next page, everybody together. One, two, three, go! Donna Hose! My heart right now is so happy. They all actually were so engaged. Reading is so important. Continue to read. Read with your parents, read to your siblings, to everybody in your family, and I hope you continue doing more and more. Did everybody have fun? Yeah! All right. Sending so much love, everybody. Thank you. Beijos. It really was a magical day. HEB and Camilla want to share their love of reading with all of you, so you're all going home with a copy of Just Try One Bite. Camilla's as passionate about cooking as she is about reading, so up next, we're pulling out our aprons and making a family favorite. Stay right here. All right, we are back hanging out with Max Greenfield, Beth Bears, and Camilla Alves McConaughey. So you're showing us how to make a McConaughey family favorite, right? Yes, and a Women of Today community favorite, too. I know what you're thinking, looking at my sleeves, <laughs> of like, what is she doing? But I couldn't say no to the pink and the fluff, guys. Right. All so, I'm thinking is like, man, we all don't come out like that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm thinking in my head. Like, but I'm going to show you a trick really quick at home. Look, I always have a rubber band on my sleeve. Oh, glue does that. My sleeve. makeup artist. Really? <gasps> there we go. If you need to keep your sleeve up, you put yeah. it over there, you hide it, so and it stays. Clever. It doesn't go anywhere. I like Boom. that. So what is this? All right, what are we we're going to do butter Butternut squash okay. air soup. Okay. okay. I love that. Some people are intimidated by butternut squash. A simple tip for you guys, if you want to make it easier to peel, you just get the fork, make some holes in it, put it in the microwave for a couple minutes, and then it peels off super easy. Okay, okay. Yes. Do y'all like, like butternut squash soup? I love it. I love it. it. I love butternut squash. I gotta tell you, I'm not a big fan of butternut butternut squash until you I are? tried the soup. We oh. made the soup and I was like, I love this. I love it. it. My sister is the amazing. Oh, this, is not, uh, this is not great. <laughs> not professional. It's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Professional. You're not doing fine. great over so there? So you're going to cook in the oven. It's one sheet, guys. Just the butternut squash, onions, and pears. Once it's cooked, it's going to look like this. Okay? okay. You're going oh. to transfer this to your blender. Okay. Oh, okay, just dump this in. I was working real hard over there. Okay, wait. I was like, I forgot about TV magic. We're not going to do all the TV magic. We're doing TV magic right now. I don't have to do all that. Surprise, surprise. Oh, no, no, you can, you can. You just continue chopping, okay? Okay. We're next one. Oh, then we pour it. What are we doing? We're the broth. You can do vegetable broth or chicken broth. Okay. I like the flavor of chicken broth better, but you're vegetarian. Then you're going to just... Mix oh it up. God. Do you know what we do at Women of Today? When I'm the blender goes, you gotta dance. 
Okay. Dance. okay. Come on, come oh, on. Oh, they like dancing. Come on, they come like on. dancing. They like dancing. I said, hey. I said, hey. <laughs> okay, so what are all we right. doing now? Once it's all blended, okay. super easy. You're going oh. to transfer okay. to a pot. Oh my God, it's so full. I'm so scared about it. Wait. <laughs> So, so then you put a lid on it and how, what do you do? Oh, before, before you oh, cook before. about 30 minutes, you add a stick of cinnamon. Oh, Ooh, I love. All right? Okay. And this is really important, guys, because a lot of times we use just the, you know, the ground the <laughs> ground, The cinnamon, ground, right? yeah, yeah. Spice cinnamon. But the reason why we're using a stick is because it simmers together for 30 minutes and the flavors really slowly and it really okay. gives that extra kick that you will not get just with the powder. All right. And you're going to cook that for 30 minutes. Boom. Okay. And then you it's ready? TV magic. Yes. Ooh. So underneath, I love my life. I get to eat at my show. Um, so this, we have finished bowls of the soup right here uh, with some sourdough on the side, which yes. Um, so dig in. Do you like it? That's the question. Oh my God, that is so good. Oh, it's the perfect amount of cinnamon as well. And the pear, the pear is such a cool touch. I didn't, right? I've never made butternut squash with Because that. usually they do it with apples. Right. But the pear adds a completely different Yeah, totally different right. Taste, right? That's what I mean. Oh my God, mine. that's delicious. With apples. Um, if you want to try this at home, check out the recipe on our show's Facebook page.